Hey, hi guys, uh, nice to meet you guys. My name is Jin Chi. Uh, I have a lot to share today about uh, how, to, uh, how to automate your workflow on engaging your audience. So I'm just going to give a brief uh, introduction about myself. So uh, uh, I'm actually not from the tech side, I'm a law graduate. And then right now I'm running a digital firm called Catalyst Digital. Okay, so um, the first thing that I'm going to do is to run you guys through the topics that I'm going to cover today so that we will have a better flow on what I'm going to uh, share with you today. So if uh, this presentation is actually uh, really actionable, so if you have your laptops and uh, or your, or your uh, iPads or something, you can uh, get it out and uh, uh, do some uh, exercise with me. Okay, so the first topic that I'm going to talk about is why is keeping your audience engaged important? And then we are going to look into the traditional workflow, as in how we use to create content and how we share with uh, our audience back then, or uh, uh, most of us are still doing it right now. And the uh, next one is that we are going to look into what kind of automation tools we can use to automate some of our workflow so that we can uh, reduce repetitive work and can focus more on uh, things that matters. And then after that, we are going to redefine the workflow. We are going to look at how the workflow looks like after we automate our workflow. So without further ado, uh, let's begin. So uh, just to get a uh, discussion started, so why is keeping our audience engaged important? I believe that most of you guys have uh, many different reasons for this. But to us, we like to think that it's about uh, remaining competitive in your own industry and also it's about playing your finances smart. I'm going to show you why. So try to think of a brand that first appeared in your head when I say smartphone. So I'm pretty sure you guys will think of iPhones, Samsung, Xiaomi or Huawei. And when I mention CMS, you'll think of WordPress. WordPress. Yes, because uh, I mean they, it, it, it happens because uh, these are the brands that play bits and pieces in your life, whether through ads you see in cinema or TV or radio, or you hear it somewhere. It's just there because it, it feels like part of your life. So uh, the second reason that I would like to encourage people to automate their workflow is because it lowers your cost. So uh, prior to uh, building this presentation deck, my team actually uh, researched uh, did a simple research for me, uh, so thank you to them. And they found that uh, four sources, uh, Harvard Business Review, uh, Outbound Engine, Forbes, and Invest, actually say that the cost of acquiring a new customer is five times as compared to retaining an existing client. Now, I know some of you guys might say, what if I'm a website development company? I mean, most of the website services are one-off. They do not order new websites uh, every month, every month. I, I, I mean, true, but Think of something that you can upsell. If you if you if you build a website for them, there's so much more that you can do for them in terms of SEO, in terms of marketing. So what is keeping them uh, not to go for your service, but rather look for someone else? So you have to think about why why are they not going back to you? So uh, this is the point that I'm trying to make. So let's explore how the traditional workflow used to be without any automation tools. So uh, a really simple one, the first one is of course you create the content. So with, uh, uh, by, by saying creating the content, you first research what you want to talk about and then you create relevant images or, or relevant videos, anything you like. And then if you practice good SEO practice, you might you know, do your tags, your internal links and backlinks, uh, voila. And then after that, you schedule it on WordPress. Yeah, you, now you might do it using a certain plugin. I don't do that using plugin. I'm going to uh, show show you how I do it. Uh, or you might ask one of your staff to do it for you. You might uh, ask him to draft the content and then have it scheduled on uh, 10 a.m. Tuesday, and then you have to post it manually. And then after that, you share it across multiple social media. So after you create your post on your website. Then you log into your Facebook or you log into your Twitter and then you share it and then you put a, a specific caption like, hey, have you checked out our latest post or something like that. And then if you run email marketing as well or a newsletter, you have to <laughs> log back in into your, your, your email provider that you are using and then you have to create relevant images again and then you have to 
maybe take out certain snippets from your post. And then after that, you have to select your list of followers. If you are tracking it using a customer relation uh, management CRM tools, or uh, Google Sheets, or any Excel sheet. After that, you have to restart for every new post. So imagine doing this four times a month. So it's really, it, it, it can take up to a day. So it, it, it's like four days, four, four working days long in a month if you do not automate your workflow. So to us, it's definitely not sustainable because first thing is repetitive. It's, it's really a, a robot kind of work. And second, it takes up resources. It takes up your time. It takes up your human resources. It takes up your, your staff power. And then this stun your growth because as an entrepreneur or if you are in the SME industry, of course you want to focus on what matters to your company. You want to give more time in business development. You want to talk to more people, share what services you have, not sitting in a room doing, doing this kind of thing again and again and again. So, and also it's inconsistent because humans do make errors. So if you schedule it manually, sometimes, or maybe, maybe you tell your client, hey, I'm going to put you on my newsletter, I'm going to share a post once every two weeks. But just so happen that that week you are really busy and you miss it, so you send it the next week. Now it might, it might be something that is really small, but to some people it might seem unprofessional, it's inconsistent. So if you let the, the, the technology do their work, it's more consistent and it takes up uh, less of your time. So I'm going to share what we can do using automation. So if you have your laptop up, feel free to uh, uh, do it with me. So what are the tools that you can utilize to organize your workflow systematically? Now the first one is Zapier. Who have heard of Zapier before? Or oh, quite a quite a number of hands. So Zapier is known as a platform that is uh, uh, it can enables two platforms to talk to each other. So imagine WordPress talking to Facebook. Uh, so so if you have like a post on your WordPress, it's like WordPress telling Facebook, hey, I have a post. Can you also create a post on Facebook? So they will communicate to each other and they will do it for you without you even realizing it. So, <clears throat> what are the sample tasks that you can do on Zapier? So the first one is that it can help you to engage your audience on Facebook automatically. And the next one is it helps you to engage your audience, uh, audience on Twitter. So these are more basics. The third one is my personal favorite. It helps you to make data-driven decisions. So it helps you to track the metrics that matters to you the most. So what do I mean by that? Let's go uh, into it one by one. So uh, the Facebook, uh, I've, I've done a, a few screenshots. You guys can uh, try it uh, later or now if you want. So the first steps is of course, uh, you make a zap. So the orange button on top, you make a zap. So a zap is basically a task. So after that, uh, you choose a trigger app. So what is a trigger app? Trigger app basically means that what do you, uh, when do you want Zapier to do something? So. Uh, as you can see from the screen, uh, I have to select WordPress because I want Zapier to do something when something is triggered on my WordPress website. So, the first thing is that I'm going to, uh, it's too blurry, probably you guys can't see, but it basically says new comment, any web hook or new post. So for me, I like uh, Zapier to do something when I have a new post. So whenever I post a new post, Zapier will be triggered so I, I link it to my personal website, so it's Catalyst Digital, I link it. And then I tell Zapier that my post status should be published. So if I do, uh, so if I create a post in draft or in private, it wouldn't post it to Facebook. So that's what it means. And then I want the post type to be post only. So if I add a page, it wouldn't be triggered as well. So it's really specific and it, it can get uh, really versatile, so be really creative with it. And what happens next is that, now that it knows I want it to do something when I have a new post, I tell Facebook that I want it to create a page post, a page post when I have a new post on WordPress. So what does it do? So it will ask me for my page. So if you have a Facebook page, if you don't, please go and create one right now, it's really important link it to your, to your company page and then uh, it asks you to put a message 
that you want for your for your clients or for your audience. Now, for me, you guys can't read, but what I've written uh, wrote, uh, written there is uh, hi, folks at WordCamp KL 2018. Uh, your new post is up. Check out for more. Now, the green box is it, it works basically like a short code. So what it means is that it takes value from your WordPress site and substitute into it. So the next time, for example, if you have a new post titled uh, Happy Merry Christmas, everyone, it will, it, it will say, Hi everyone at WordPress, uh, WordCamp KL 2018, your new post is up. Uh, check out our latest post, which is Happy Merry Christmas. So it works as if you're typing it. So it's really good. Uh, the next one is the link URL. It works the same thing as well. It's, it works similarly to a short code. It substitutes the value. So every time you have a new post, it substitutes the value. So it wouldn't link it back to the new post. Uh, sorry, link it back to the old post. So that's why I meant. Uh, okay. So after this, uh, you are done. So basically, you just have to give your Zap a name. You can put any name you want so that you can identify it, uh, identify with it, or your staff can. And then uh, it checks your WordPress uh, website every 15 minutes, every 15 minutes. So you just have to focus on writing. You don't even have to go back to this step again. You just have to set it, set it up once and it will handle the rest for you. So uh, this is how it looks like once you're done. So uh, it takes your featured image automatically and put it on Facebook, your, your message that you have written just now, and also your title and your excerpts. So I'm just doing uh, two dummies uh, post here, and then you, you can have a look. So this is basically how it looks like. So Twitter, I'm just going to go through this really fast because it was the same. So just now, like I said, you tell Xavier that you want it to be triggered when you add a new post. So Twitter, it works the same. So I tell Twitter that every time I have a new post, I want you to create an image tweet for me. So I tell, uh, I tell Zapier that my tweet content is Hi everybody in WordCamp KL uh, Have you checked out our latest post? Then I put the title there So the green color again, it works like a short code So it substitutes the title in for you You don't even have to type in the, the title again And then the image, you just link it to the featured image So every time you put an image in your WordPress post It does it for you on Twitter as well So you don't have to go back and forth, back and forth towards uh, uh, multiple social media platforms and also guess what it resize for you so that's the good part and that's it you're done so when you're done this is basically what appears so it's really uh, convenient and the third one is my personal favorite so this is uh, uh, something that is less common because people uh, uh, do not actually use Zapier to to do this function but uh, I'll show you what, what, what I can do with Google Sheets so uh, again, I, I, I chose the same trigger, which is whenever I have a new post, uh, I, I tell Xavier to do something. But this time, I want it to create a new role in Google Sheet. So what kind of data can I, uh, can I track? So for me, uh, you guys probably can read, but I'll read it out for you. I want it to track my SEO score. So if you have a Yoast plugin, uh, I'm pretty sure most of you guys use it uh, on your WordPress, it will track the scores for you and also your post ID and uh, you can track many other uh, different metrics but for the sake of uh, WordCamp KL uh, I, I chose a simple metric for you guys to see so post ID is really uh, useful if you are a coder so if you are dealing with CSS and you want page ID rather than reading from the permalink you can just get it from the Google Sheet it's really that simple so how does it look? Finally, it will show you something like this. So every time you uh, uh, you know go to work or you wanna you want your staff to have a look at it, you can basically see which post is not doing so well on SEO, and then you can tell your staff, hey, you need to look into uh, maybe you're lacking some form of uh, backlinks or internal links, or your tags are wrong, your H1 tags, uh, your your URL or something like that. You can look into it. And it's really useful because it enables you to focus on what matters rather than going through the post again and again and again. So let's look at how Zapier uh, redefined the workflow. So previously, there's like so many different steps. Right now, you just have one step, or just one step, which is create the content. You just create the content and it will do everything for you. If you use it in the right way, it can even track 
actionable data. Actionable in actionable data as in data that you can use it to improve your workflow right now. That's it for Zapier. So I'm going to go into a different tool, which is uh, MailChimp. So who have heard of MailChimp before? Anyone? Yeah. So MailChimp is basically a, 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 a email marketing tool. It automates your market, uh, your, your email marketing as well. So what are the sample tools uh, or sample tasks that you can do with MailChimp for engagement? So the first one is it shares your blog updates. You know, newsletters, you no longer have to craft it one by one. <laughs> it just takes up new posts, substitute it, and then it's sent out to your so to your audience at, uh, at bi-weekly or weekly or daily, depending on your, your own preference. And the second one is it sends, a, it sends out a, a welcome message. It's something that is really useful if you're running an e-commerce or a blog or, or just a website. Because imagine you know some, somebody sub subscribing to your newsletter, you send them a 30% discount uh, coupon the first time. And then you can actually track who opens the uh, who opens the email and who didn't. So these are really uh, powerful metrics they want to track right now. It's really useful. So I'm going to show you guys how uh, do I do it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to name my steps uh, called newsletter Wednesday. You can name it any any how you want. So the first step again, you can create an account of Mailchimp. It's totally free. Uh, Zapier is also free, but they have a quota. I'm going to talk about it later. Uh, so you can first create and uh, create a step, and this will appear. So basically, they will ask you for your asset, RSS feed URL. So what is the RSS feed URL? Basically, it's just asking for your, your blog link. So basically, if you if for me, my blog link is uh, www.catalysdigital.my slash blog. So for you, it might be www.wordcampkl2018 slash blog. So once you give it that data, they will know where to look for uh, a new post whenever you post something new. So they will ask you when should we send it. So you tell them that I want you to send it on Friday or Thursday or Wednesday. So it's your own preference. And then you can select the time. That's how you do it. So once you are done with that, they will ask uh, what's the email subject they want to post. Uh, what's the email subject they want to put. So for the sake of uh, working KL, I have simplified it. So I'm just going to put post from RSS feed title. So what does that mean? It, it means title of my website. So you will just substitute the title of my uh, website, the name, and put it there. For RSS feed date. So what's the, uh, what does that mean? It means the, uh, the date that you are sending it out. So if you, uh, if you have done it correctly, it will say post from working KL 2018 for this week or something like that. So you will know that it's, uh, it's the latest update. So you don't, you don't have to do it uh, manually again. So again, you can also put your name and uh, any name that you want. So if you're running a, a, a certain mascot for your company or someone that they can uh, you know, uh, communicate with, something that represents your company, make it interesting for them to interact with, you can put that as well and then you can choose the email address and the last thing that is my favorite is the personalization. So what does that mean? So personalization basically means that you can merge the text to the name again. So basically imagine, uh, let's say uh, uh, I won't sign up for my newsletter. Rather than saying wong at gmail.com, I can say dear I won't welcome. So it, it looks more personalized, like I'm writing the email myself. So it, uh, so it makes your audience feel more engaged. So some, some of them, some, some of the people here might say, oh, what, but I'm not good in designing templates. What if I want to make a real good email marketing or, or newsletter that looks good? Well, guess what? MailChimp actually have done that for you. You just have to select, select the template that you want to use right now and put your own pictures and your own work. So that's it. You are done. So after that, when you have substitute all those in, you basically get uh, a newsletter sent out every uh, every Wednesday, like what I want, at a certain time to my audience. And it will automatically substitute the latest post for you. So de depending on how many posts you want to show your audience, maybe it's three, maybe it's four, or maybe it's two. So it will, it will do that automatically for you, so it's really useful. 
So the next one is uh, the last one is welcoming new subscribers. And yeah, it, it's pretty straightforward. So what does it do is that every time a new subscriber subscribes to my newsletter, I want an email automatically sent to uh, sent to them right now. So I will say, hey, welcome to the exclusive club. Uh, uh, enjoy your stay, uh, or these are the, some stuff that you can start with. So it really helps on the onboarding process. So if you're running a, a store, or you're running a blog, or you're running a website, it's really useful because people know what they are supposed to do uh, when they first uh, engage with your website. So when you are when you have done it correctly, if you have select a, a, a good template, it, it should look something like this. You can also create your own template. Basically, it works uh, the same as Page Builder, but uh, but probably not as not as smooth. Right? I know most of the page builder right now, you can uh, drag it around and, and it's, re it's really useful because you can put some CSS as well, but I, I don't think so you can do it with uh, with, with uh, MailChimp, but nevertheless, it works uh, similarly. So it's really user-friendly, you just have to play around with it, substitute your own image, put the text that you want to show to your audience, and you're done. You started an automation. So what this does is every time, every time, no matter when uh, in this whole world, whoever who subscribes to your email, uh, your, 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 your newsletter, they will get an email automatically right now uh, saying that uh, onboarding process, what are some stuff that you can do, uh, and, 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 and uh, so on and so forth. So it's really useful. We no longer have to track our email list using uh, Excel sheet or Google sheet. <laughs> or any uh, ZR, CRM tools that you want. So right now, it's really simple. You just need one platform. You just create the content, and it handles email marketing for you. It handles personalized approach. It also handles onboarding. You just have to make sure you get the right data in the, in the right place. So basically, what I mean by, uh, you know, the short code thingy, uh, uh, short code like thingy previously, just have to make sure you substitute the right info, and you are set. So uh, with these tools, let's create a sustainable workflow together where you can eliminate repetitive work. So, so no more uh, robotic work. And you can increase the lifetime revenue of a client. So you can always upsell, give, uh, uh, try to give more knowledge, try to give more tips, learn to give before you ask. So, and then you can, uh, for entrepreneurs or business owners, you can make data-driven decisions right now you can know uh, who's a good subscriber because you can actually know if they actually open your email or not. Or uh, you can track the SEO scores like what I did previously. You can also look at uh, the post ID or any categories that you want to track. For example, if you have uh, two type of categories you want to post on WordPress, uh, design and websites, and you want to make five posts for each a uh, month, so you can, you can know which one actually needs more attention to and whatnot. So, uh, and yeah, with automation, you will definitely look more credible and trustworthy because machine doesn't make errors. <laughs> and technology will always schedule uh, your post at the right time for you. You only need to set it up once. So uh, that's it for my talk. And uh, if you'd like to connect with me, you can uh, do it via one of the methods here and I uh, really thank you for you guys for listening and I'm happy to take any Q&A.